This video shows how to estimate confidence interval for population variance sigma squared. And I'll do so the old school way by using manual computation and statistical table. But I'm also going to kick it up a notch into the modern era, as it were, by using Excel spreadsheet functions. As you know, the sample variance S squared is the estimator for the population variance sigma squared. Variance, or its square root equivalent, standard deviation, is a measure of variability and tells us how dispersed or how spread out the outcomes of a process are. As such, in operations management, for example, it could be used as a measure of efficiency. The greater the variance, the less efficient is the process. And in finance, variance and standard deviation are widely used as a measure of volatility or risk in investments because they capture uncertainty. The greater the variance or standard deviation, the greater the risk of the investment. Confidence intervals for population variance are based on the chi-square distribution, the limits of which are shown right here, the lower limit and the upper limit. The denominator represents the critical values associated with each of these two limits. The numerator, as you can see, is the product of degrees of freedom and the sample variance. Degrees of freedom is sample size less one. So in this simple example, where we have 30 observations, say, of um, 30 firms operating income, we find that the degrees of freedom based on this, of course, is going to be 29, which is 30 minus 1. So we find that the sample variance of the firm's operating income is 18,540. So this value is referred to as a point estimate because it's a single value with which to infer on the underlying population variance of incomes. So now, we can use this to make such an inference. Alternatively, we can also calculate confidence interval limits within which we believe the true underlying population variance lies. For example, to calculate 95% confidence interval, the tail region would of course amount to 5%, which is 1 minus 95%, since in this chi-square distribution, the total area under the curve is 1, if you recall, because it's considered a probability density function. And so the tail regions combined would be 0 0.5, 0 0.025 on the left, and 0 0.025 on the right. And so our task here is to identify the critical value associated with this lower tail and also the one associated with this upper tail. Plug them into this construct and figure out the confidence interval limits. And that's what we, we've done right here. So the lower tail here will be associated with a critical value of 16.047. How do we get that? Well, on the chi-square table, we're going to be looking for that chi-square value that corresponds to the area of 0.975 to the right of it. Remember, if this left tail here amounts to 0 0.025, which it does, then everything else to the right of it from here going all the way to the right, inclusive of this right tail, would be 0.975. So going to the chi-square table and based on the 29 degrees of freedom, which we determined, right here, right? So scrolling down, right? The 5% level, that's 29 degrees of freedom right there. And then we're going to look for the critical value corresponding to the area of 0.975 to the right of it. And that gives us this critical value of 16.047. So likewise, for this upper critical value, we're going to be searching for that chi-square value corresponding to the area of 0 0.025 to the right of it, which is going to be the shaded region to the right of it. And so when we do that, back over here to the chi-square table, that again is our 29 degrees of freedom, and then we're going to search out 0 0.025 area. That's it right there. So you can see that the critical value comes out to be 45.72. And that's it. So armed with those two values, we plug them into this to determine the lower limit of the interval to be 11,765 and the upper limits to be 33,640. And so we can be 95% confident that the true population variance lies between these two limits. And if you want to express it in terms of standard deviation, simply take the square root of these two numbers. And that's going to fetch you something like 108 on the low side and the 183 on the upper side.
Better yet, let's hook this up with uh, Excel functions. So right here, I've set this up. This is my canvas right here. And uh, the instruction here is to type in unshaded cells and to calculate in the shaded cells. So for my confidence level, I type 95%. And for alpha, I'm going to calculate that to be 1 minus 95%. And for my alpha over 2, I'm going to calculate that to be alpha divided by 2. And that's my given variance. Sample size is 30. And so degrees of freedom calculated would be sample size less 1. And to calculate my left tail critical value, which is this amount right here, using Excel function, this is it right here. And this is going to give me the inverse of the left tail probability of the distribution. So executing that, I'm going to hit equal CHI. Once I start typing it out, you'll see it right here, right there. All right, so I can double click it. And looking at my cheat sheet, or if you want to look at this, you can too. But this is clearer. So we click on alpha over 2, comma, and then degrees of freedom of 29 close and that's the critical value right there and then with that I calculate the limit which is going to be equal open parenthesis degrees of freedom we multiply that by the sample variance right there and then we close parenthesis and divide that by the critical value which we just calculated there you go all right and Finally, we get the right tail critical value, which is going to return the inverse of the right tail probability of the chi-squared distribution. So this is a function right there. And coming out there and start typing equal CHI, and you're already going to see it as one of the choices there. And that's it right here. So double click it real quick. There you go. And then click on alpha over 2, which is this guy right here, comma, and then click on degrees of freedom, which is this, close parenthesis, and that's our critical value on the right tail. And with that, we calculate the interval limits equal open parenthesis. It's going to be the degrees of freedom of 29. We multiply that by the sample variance shown right there, and close, divide by the critical value, which we just um, calculated. And voila, that gives us the lower limit of the confidence interval. And the way you set it up is quite nice in the sense that if you choose to make this a 99% confidence interval, for example, just type 99% right there. And everything automatically recalculates, providing you with the two limits right there. And that's it.